This hair reminds me of when I was growing up in the Bronx. Crazy little gal. Boricua. Going to the bodega. Ordering some fragua on my chopped cheese. I get chased out of the shop. Papa yelling at me that they don't serve tweakers. I miss that. Beanie beanie bum bum. JLo has been haunting me for the past week. Ever since I watched her attempt at a magnum opus, this is me now, and then the corresponding self-indulgent behind-the-scenes documentary, The Greatest Love Story Never Told, I keep seeing her everywhere. I can't eat. <laughs> big, big booty, so you got a big booty. I can't sleep. <laughs> Let's get I have no rest. We can get that was pretty good. Throughout my viewing experience, I went through the five stages of grief. I died. I was reborn. I changed races. I put my thing down, flipped it, and reversed it. It was not the content itself, though. I've watched projects that were arguably worse. It was only after some deep contemplation, realigning my chakras, converting religions, and decalcifying my third eye, that I figured out the reason for my distress. But our first stop in this spiritual journey is an unexpected one. I don't what know. What is Walmart? It's like they sell wall stuff? No. What is it? <laughs> the Simple Life premiered on December 2nd of 2003, marking the US's second most violent assault on the world that year. That was a joke! In hindsight, the show has become a staple in iconic 2000s skinny legend reality TV. Experiencing a reevaluation after the public realized that we had judged and scorned certain female pop culture figures too harshly in their heyday, I bring this show up because it really marked the beginning of a new, unprecedented era in American culture, what I have dubbed the epidemic of high cheekboned mediocrity. This is a cultural phenomenon in which attractive people with minimal to non-existent talent can amass a substantial amount of fame, fortune, and influence that would have been next to impossible in a pre-internet era. This is not to say that I think all of these new pseudo-celebrities are bad people, nor am I even knocking their work ethic. Navigating this industry is difficult, and maintaining a career requires at least some business savvy. But let's be real. These are not people whose raw talents or skill sets warrant this level of success. This might just be me projecting, but I can't imagine that any of these individuals who have even a shred of self-awareness, aren't tuned in to the fact that if they want true respect, they now have to prove themselves to the public, but most importantly, to themselves. So these individuals dive into music, acting, dance, whatever endeavor can showcase that they really are a talent. See society? We're good at something. This nearly always results in abject failure, but some do discover that business is where their true strength lies. What many write off as self-indulgent vanity projects, or maybe a celeb trying their hand at something they had a vague interest in, I had always seen as being, more often than not, a flailing, desperate attempt by the lucky to justify their own fame. Made even more devastating by the fact that for most of them, it will be a fruitless endeavor. Now, what does this have to do with JLo? Jennifer Lopez is undeniably more talented than a lot of these individuals. She did not come from a wealthy or well-connected family and was in an industry where roles and opportunities for a Latina were few and far between, especially in the late 90s. However, her being catapulted into stardom, much like any attractive performer past and present, was more the result of being in the right place at the right time, along with the industry backing of Tommy Mottola. Matola was the head of Sony Music and was actively trying to sabotage his ex Mariah Carey via JLo's first few albums. It was these factors, as opposed to sheer raw talent, that were primarily responsible for her A list stardom. I'd always dream. No! Whoa, I'm sorry, I'm sorry everybody, I'm sorry everybody. That hurt me too. Now Lopez certainly has a strong work ethic. She is disciplined, she knows how to navigate the industry. She has the business component of show business on lock. As for the show, uh, she's a pretty solid dancer. She is a decent actor, though with the right role and director, she can give a charismatic and compelling performance. She definitely has stage presence and a decent enough voice. I'd always dream that find the perfect lover that through vocal training could be made a lot stronger. If anything, the fact that she isn't devoid of talent makes this even more frustrating, since greatness might be within her reach. She is truly the best example of being a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Now, what you have to understand is that first and foremost, JLo genuinely wants to be taken seriously as an artist. Her need to be validated as a great musician or actor on par with her peers in the industry is made more apparent 
in a previous project of hers, Halftime, the 2022 Netflix film documenting her preparing for the Super Bowl halftime show. There is a moment in the documentary where she is reading a film review for her recent movie, Hustlers, where the critic writes, frankly, it's thrilling to see a criminally underrated performer get her dues from prestige film outlets. This line reduces Jennifer to tears. It is very apparent throughout the entire documentary that JLo has become very frustrated with people writing her off as just a pretty face with some bops, sure, but not being an undeniable talent. This is the source of so much of her distress career-wise. Now, the multimedia project This Is Me Now is not very memorable. There are others who can give you a more in-depth analysis and breakdown of it, but the quick synopsis of the film is that it explores JLo's tumultuous relationship with love and men, delving into her fear of being alone, through dance, song, and therapy sessions with Rotund Joseph in a sweater. There is a Zodiac Council consisting of the most random collection of celebrities commenting on her life choices, featuring none other than Miss Kiki Palmer and Jennifer Lewis, who is all, I'm Jennifer Lewis, as she should. Eventually she realizes that she loves herself and that she's finally found home, which is apparently in Ben Affleck's strong Bostonian arms. This project is tonally disjointed and never really delves into, say, the role that JLo played in the demise of some of her marriages, which might have actually been a very vulnerable and honest approach. It just goes for the safe, I never learned to love myself, so how could I love anybody else? Angle. Without truly being introspective, that film alone would not have inspired me to make this video though. It was rather the existential dread that oozed out of the behind the scenes footage. Throughout the course of the whole documentary, JLo describes the entire process that went behind making the visual project and accompanying album with such unbearable sincerity. It becomes uncomfortable to watch at points. She is genuinely giving this project her all, spending hours in the studio, going as far as self-financing it, which given her net worth is, you know, not exactly impossible, but still. This is clearly a passion project of hers. Her shortcomings as a creative are painfully apparent, but unfortunately not to her. There is an infamous 1998 Movie Line magazine interview where Lopez, discussing some of the up and coming actresses of her day, called Cameron Diaz a lucky model who's been given a lot of opportunities and said that she couldn't even remember Gwyneth Paltrow's movies. Now this could have just been an egotistical moment from a young performer who has attributed their sudden rise in fame to being a once in a generation talent. But combined with numerous rumors of her disrespectful behavior over the years, it seems like this dismissive attitude has become more of a established character trait. So I was working in a movie theater and she was coming in to see a movie. So her team reached out days in advance to let us know that JLo was coming in and she, she bought out an entire theater when I say bought out an entire theater, I mean she bought six tickets and then prevented us from selling other tickets to anyone else because she couldn't watch the movie with poor people in the room. Um, and then she wasn't going to come through the front doors. Uh, she was going to come through the back doors where we take out the trash, you know, where the dumpsters are. So we had to spend an entire day cleaning dumpsters and the whole back area because her team didn't want her seeing any trash and they made this explicitly clear to the managers that it needed to be spotless so that she didn't feel like she was coming in through the back doors. So that was fun. And then when she arrived, we all had to evacuate because no one was allowed to look at her uh, while she took a secret elevator to her little secret theater to watch her movie in peace. And we all had to evacuate again so that uh, we wouldn't see her. Mind you, mind you, this is at like made in Manhattan time in her career. And she's a celebrity, but like Justin Bieber and like uh, Jaden Smith are coming to the theater using the front doors. Kevin Sorbo, uh, Nikki Six, and Tommy Lee of Motley Crue. Uh, Jamie Foxx, I fucking hate Jamie Foxx, that guy's a dick, but he'd use the front doors. This was in an area where there was a bunch of celebrities all of the time. None of them made it a fuck deal. None of them made it an issue, except Jennifer Lopez. Normally, I'm not a fan of calling female celebrities divas, especially if there is not much evidence for it, or if the evidence in question is just them standing up for themselves or making demands that a male celebrity would not receive the same amount of backlash for. But in the case of JLo, it is a bizarre amount of people who have either worked for her or around her that can attest to her genuinely inflated sense of self. Jennifer Lopez held an audition for dancers for one of her tours. This was years ago. Mm -hmm. And so it was not most of the time a dance audition. You're not getting paid. You've been there since 10 a.m. and you're auditioning until 6 p.m. She came in the very last the last part of it to like see the dancers that were left, meet everybody. She walks in the room. I wasn't there, so this is hearsay, okay? Mm -hmm. She walks in the room 
and she said, um, thank you so much. You guys have worked so hard. Um, by a show of hands, um, if there are any Virgos in the room, can you just raise your hand? So a bunch of Virgos raised their hand. And she, she shot them on sight. Shot them on sight. <laughs> <laughs> Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> what did she do? Did they have to she leave? She whispered to her assistant. No. She looked at them and she said, thank you so much for coming. Get out of here. When one person says something, could be true. When multiple people say something, that's kind of the rule. Yeah. Of, right? When multiple people tell the story, it's like, oh, that happened. Now, are there other celebrities who have arguably done significantly worse and gotten away with it? Absolutely. But this video is not about them. This contrast in her character is made significantly worse considering how much of her brand is her insisting that at heart she's really just a down to earth, crazy wild girl from the Bronx. Despite the block not really claiming her like that. This combined with an army of yes men surrounding her for the past two decades, it seems as if she genuinely believes that she's this true artist who the world refuses to give their flowers to for whatever reason, racial prejudice, sexism, industry BS, etc. Though her being a Latina obviously had an impact on her career for better or worse, throughout the entirety of this project and her previous documentary, there is this giant elephant in the room. The truth that dare not be uttered. That perhaps, just maybe, the reason that no one sees you as an artist is because you were never exceptionally great at anything, but no one, not JLo, not her team, can even hint at this possibility. It's like the modern day court of Versailles or, you know, Stalin's inner circle. There is this palpable frustration in her not being taken seriously and trying to channel her emotions and heartbreak into this project, pouring herself into what she considers to be her magnum opus that reflects the past three decades of her life. But she just doesn't have the sauce like that. It's like witnessing someone try and write poetry in a second language that they don't have a great grasp on. By the end of the doc, I genuinely just felt bad for her. I know that sounds bizarre to say, especially because I do generally have a sort of inverse relationship between how attractive and successful a person is and how much sympathy I feel for them. But still, there is this confusion on her behalf. How could I have maintained fame for so long in such a cutthroat industry? How could I have acquired the traditional hallmarks of success? Number one movie at the box office, Billboard's top 100 hits, covers of magazines, a Vegas residency. If it wasn't for the fact that I am exceptional, Who's gonna tell her? There are plenty of performers who are initially typecast as the heartthrob or the bombshell or the sidekick that through taking creative risks and oftentimes funding their own projects were able to attain critical success and cement themselves as artists as opposed to just celebrities. The past few years in particular have finally allowed for people who aren't the Matthew McConaughey's of this world to change the course of their career and have a rebrand or renaissance of sorts. JLo certainly has more than enough money and connections to fund her own star vehicles. Heck, she's already been a producer on many of her own projects, but none of them, with maybe the exception of Hustlers, has done anything to cement her as a bona fide talent. From the looks of her upcoming projects, it seems as if she's leaning more into the safe and comfortable stock character strategy, followed by Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Ryan Reynolds. And that's just in regards to her acting career. Her music has never really been critically acclaimed, and she arguably had even less of a role to play in the success of her albums. Considering that she is not a major producer, songwriter, or heck, even vocalist on some of her songs. Unlike some of the internet celebrities who just accept their lot in life and grow comfortable with the fact that they will never really be true artists, but are still, you know, having their fun making a bag, JLo is still chasing the dangling carrot of critical acclaim and public respect. And as cruel as it sounds, I don't think she's ever gonna catch it. I'm not saying it is impossible. Heck, despite my critiques of her, I am not preying on her downfall or the downfall of any of this new crop of pseudo celebrities, to be honest. As much as I joke about being a hater to my core, I don't enjoy seeing these people struggle. At this point in my life, it just genuinely makes me sad. And trust me, I get it, okay? I'm not saying that I have as much compassion for these individuals as like people in refugee camps, uh, but still, okay, there's layers to sympathy people. Letting go of pipe dreams can be painful, but admitting that your success is in large part due to sheer dumb luck and that you really aren't that girl can be even more painful to some. Maybe a part of the reason why this documentary lingered in my mind is because 
as a creative person, there's always a time in which we have to acknowledge our shortcomings and accept that part of our career success is pure serendipity. I only have a semblance of a career because I went semi-viral in July of 2022. Now, I think that I am a good writer and I certainly put a lot of effort into my videos, but am I great? I don't even know what that would mean in the context of making content online. Am I the most talented individual on this platform? How would one even measure that? Am I the funniest person on YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram? Well, <sighs> Yes, okay, I'm kidding. Um, no, I do think that I am funny for sure, but humor is subjective and I'm not gonna be everyone's cup of tea and I'm comfortable with that. There is an inherent imposter syndrome that everyone who makes art has, at least the ones who aren't egotistical. Heck, even those who many would deem narcissistic are usually the most insecure and are just overcompensating. There is always this sinking fear that you will never become successful. But even once you've obtained a modicum of success, that initial fear of failure does not dissipate. If anything, it combines with this lingering suspicion that you're not really that good at what you do. Sometimes one can overcome this, but more often than not, it is a concern that you must shove in the back of the deep recesses of your mind and just continue creating a deep dive into Dan Schneider, or, you know, whatever content you make. What the greatest love story ever told and JLo's whole oeuvre is the ultimate fear of any creative realized. That the little voice in your head telling you that you're not that great might be correct. And one can only really be at peace with this truth if they acknowledge it, but JLo can't. And she's stuck in that perpetual hamster wheel, chasing a title that she will never catch. Only I would be pretentious enough to make an entire video essay just to say that I think this project was mid. Now, once again, she could surprise us, okay? In fact, any one of these TikTokers could surprise us. Heck, honestly, in a weird way, I kind of want one of them to do that. Like, could you imagine if like Little Hoodie came out with like the greatest psychedelic rock album? That's never gonna happen. Um, but still, you never know, okay? Listen, you can sweep in the final half. Is that a correct football metaphor? I don't care about sports. Thank you for watching. Shout out to my top patrons. If you would like to subscribe to my Patreon, please click on the link in the description and on screen. That wasn't even singing. It wasn't even speaking melodically. It was just so off-putting. Um, anyway, sorry for that. Uh, thank you to my other lovely patrons. Your names should be scrolling on screen as I speak. Bye.